So about 10 years ago, I got a call from a woman in Texas, Stacy Baker, and she'd seen some of my photographs in an art exhibition, and was wondering if she could commission me to take a portrait of her parents.、Uh, now, at the time, I hadn't met Stacy, and I thought this was some sort of wealthy oil tycoon, and I'd struck it rich.、Uh, but it was only later that I found out she'd actually taken out a loan to make this happen. I took the picture of her parents, but I was actually more excited about photographing Stacy. The picture I made that day ended up becoming one of my best-known portraits. At the time I made this picture, Stacy was working as an attorney for the state of Texas. Not long after, she left her job、uh, to study photography in Maine. And while she was there, she ended up meeting the director of photography at the New York Times Magazine, and was actually offered a job. In the years since, Alec and I have done a number of magazine projects together, and we've become friends. A few months ago, I started talking to Alec about a fascination of mine. I've always been obsessed with how couples meet. I asked Alec how he and his wife Rachel met, and he told me the story of a high school football game where she was 16 and he was 15, and he asked her out.、Um, he liked her purple hair. She said yes, and that was it. I then asked Alec if he'd be interested in doing a photography project exploring this question. And I, I was interested in the question, but I was actually much more interested in Stacy's motivation for asking it,、uh, particularly since I'd never known Stacy to have a boyfriend. So, as part of this project, I thought it'd be interesting if she tried to meet someone. So, my idea was to have Stacy here go speed dating in Las Vegas. On Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> We ended up at what was advertised as the world's largest speed dating event. I had 19 dates, and each date lasted three minutes. Participants were given a list of icebreaker questions to get the ball rolling. Things like, if you could be any kind of animal, what would you be? That sort of thing. My first date was Colin. He's from England, and he once married a woman he met after placing an ad for a Capricorn. Alec and I saw him at the end of the evening, and he said he'd kissed a woman in line at one of the concession stands. Zach and Chris came to the datathon together. This is Carl. I asked Carl, "What's the first thing you notice about a woman?" He said, "Tits." Matthew is attracted to women with muscular calves. We talked about running. He does triathlons. I run half marathons. Alec actually liked his eyes and asked if I was attracted to him, but I wasn't, and I don't think he was attracted to me either. Austin and Mike came together. Mike asked me a hypothetical question. He said, "You're in an elevator, running late for a meeting. Someone makes a dash for the elevator." Do you hold it open for them? And I said I would not. <laughs> Cliff said the first thing he notices about a woman is her teeth, and we complimented each other's teeth. Because he's an open-mouthed sleeper, he says he has to floss more to help prevent gum disease. And so I asked him how often he flosses, and he said every other day. <laughs> Now, as someone who flosses twice a day, I wasn't really sure that that was flossing more, but I don't think I said that out loud. <laughs> Bill is an auditor, and we talked the entire three minutes about auditing. <laughs> the first thing Spencer notices about a woman is her complexion. He feels a lot of women wear too much makeup, and that they should only wear enough to accentuate the features that they have. I told him I didn't wear any makeup at all, and he seemed to think that that was a good thing. <laughs> Craig told me he didn't think I was willing to be vulnerable. He was also frustrated when I couldn't remember my most embarrassing moment. He thought I was lying, but I wasn't. I didn't think he liked me at all, but at the end of the night, he came back to me and he gave me a box of chocolates. William was really difficult to talk to. 
I think he was drunk. <laughs> Actor Chris McKenna was the MC of the event. He used to be on The Young and the Restless. I didn't actually go on a date with him. Alex said he saw several women give their phone numbers to him. Needless to say, I didn't fall in love. I didn't feel a particular connection with any of the men that I went on dates with, and I didn't feel like they felt、uh, a particular connection with me either. Now, the most beautiful thing to me, <laughs> as a photographer, is the quality of vulnerability. The physical exterior reveals a crack in which you can get a glimpse at a more fragile interior. At this Datathon event, I saw so many examples of that. But as I watched Stacy's dates and talked to her about them,、um, I realized how different photographic love is from real love. What is real love? How does it work?、Um, in order to, to to work on this question and to figure out how someone goes. From meeting on a date to having a life together,、uh, Stacy and I went to Sun City Summerlin, which is the largest retirement community in Las Vegas. Our contact there was George, who runs the community's photography club. He arranged for us to meet other couples in their makeshift photo studio. After 45 years of marriage, Anastasia's husband died two years ago, so we asked if she had an old wedding picture. She met her husband when she was a 15-year-old waitress at a small barbecue place in Michigan. He was 30. She'd lied about her age. He was the first person she dated. Dean had been named Photographer of the Year in Las Vegas two years in a row, and this caught Alex's attention. As did the fact that he met his wife Judy at the same age when Alex met Rachel. Dean admitted that he likes to look at beautiful women, but he's never questioned his decision to marry Judy. George met Josephine at a parish dance. He was 18, she was 15. Like a lot of the couples we met, they weren't especially philosophical about their early choices. George said said something that really stuck with me. He said, "When you get that feeling, you just go with it." Bob and Trudy met on a blind date when she was still in high school. They said they weren't particularly attracted to each other when they first met. Nevertheless, they were married soon after. The story that stayed with me the most was that of George, the photography club president, and his wife Mary. This was George and Mary's second marriage. They met at a country western club in Louisville, Kentucky, called the Sahara. He was there alone, drinking, and she was with friends. When they started dating, he owed the IRS nine thousand dollars in taxes, and she offered to help him get out of debt. So for the next year, he turned his paychecks over to Mary, and she got him out of debt. George was actually an alcoholic when they married, and Mary knew it. At some point in their marriage, he says he consumed fifty-four beers in one day. Another time, when he was drunk, he threatened to kill Mary and her two kids. But they escaped, and a SWAT team was was called to the house. Amazingly, Mary took him back, and eventually things got better. George has been involved in Alcoholics Anonymous and hasn't had a drink in 36 years. At the end of the day, after we left Sun City, I told Alec that I didn't actually think that the stories of how these couples met was all that interesting. What was more interesting was how they managed to stay together. They all had this beautiful quality of of endurance,、um, but that was true of the singles too.、Uh, you know, the world is hard, and the singles were out there trying to connect with other people, and the couples were holding on to each other after all these decades. My favorite pictures on this trip were of Joe and Roseanne. Now, by the time we met Joe and Roseanne, we'd gotten the habit of asking couples if they had an old wedding photograph. In their case,、uh, they simultaneously pulled out of their wallets the exact same photograph. What's more beautiful? I thought to myself, this image of a young couple who's just fallen in love, or the idea of these two people holding on to this image for decades. Thank you. <laughs>